praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I truly believe that we serve a mighty God. As uh, Pastor mentioned in his uh, word of introduction, I have been to a few churches in the last few weeks or months. There was no obstruction of any such. Surprisingly, this morning, the only access road from our village was blocked by a tipper. I was able to send the picture to Brother Manuel and a few other key members in the church. <laughs> and I think they started praying. Unfortunately, as soon as I got to Urugu, was a large queue of vehicles. Some were turning back. I went on and on, only to discover that they were cutting the road in front of Havana Royal, this hostel that is uh, just close to the first gate. Probably they were trying to lay a uh, pipe for water into the university campus. It was a very heavy old dog. My apologies, sirs and mas. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I will be talking on you, your ear, your nose, and your throat. This is a topic chosen by the Baptist Convention. Surprisingly, they have yearly medical program. And we just pick a topic and run it all over their branches, their churches, throughout the whole country. So this year, they took a topic on uh, ear, nose, and throat, ENT. Shockingly for them, we were very few. So most churches didn't even have people to give the topics. Probably that was what made the thing too heavy on some of us. So I will light off, please. Light off, thank you. Mommy Cash, yes, thank you. Next slide, please. Next slide. <laughs> the third one. We'll talk on the air. Next slide. The air has three parts, really. There are the outer air, which is the one we see, where we hang our glasses or put our earrings. But it has a hole that extends deep into the head. That is the air canal. And that ends at the air drum. So that is the outer air. Next slide. Then we have the middle air, which contains the smallest bones in the body. There are three bones. We call them ossicles. They are very tiny bones that when they are brought out, you hardly could identify them. They look like ants, small ants. Next slide. And then the inner air. So this is the third part of the air. It has two major structures positioned we can see one that has the shape of a snail. We call that one cochlea. And then there's another one that looks like the crown of a king. We call those ones semicircular canals. These are the major structures in the inner air. And we'll get to know the functions shortly. Next slide. Yes, the functions of the air is for hearing and balance. We are all hearing me now. That is on assumption that our ears are functioning properly. And the balance aspect is what makes us to sit down comfortably, comfortably on our chairs. And we are able to have orientation that we are seated right and not seated bending to the right or to the left. But I want to mention that balance, I mean, other parts of the body also contribute to balance. And that has to do with our eyes and our legs, the joints and the feet 
of our legs. So when we stand up from where we are seated, apart from the fact that we open our eyes to see that, yes, we are standing up to look straight or to look to the side, we are also able to put our feet down to know that we are standing on a solid surface. Next slide, please. Now, how do we hear? Sound gets transmitted through the canal, enters and vibrates the tympanic membrane, just like the uh, talking drum that uh, is beating for us when we are singing. And then that pushes the ossicles. Those are the small bones in the middle air. And that ends up in the cochlea, that structure that I said looks like snail. That structure that looks like snail is very, very important to our hearing. And most problems we have with hearing is resident hair. It even starts from time of pregnancy. When a pregnant woman uses drug that is not prescribed, it damages this organ. And for our information, the air is one of the first organs, special organs of senses that is formed when pregnancy is taking place. So most of the drugs or those conditions that the mother, the pregnant mother carries around affect this structure. A pregnant mother with hypertension or having diabetes or using, having jaundice, you know, all sorts of conditions. So when those drugs are used, it will affect the cochlea, the organ of hearing of the baby. Another point is that at the time of delivery, if the labor is prolonged, the child, the baby gets asphyxiated, inadequate oxygen for the child, and that affects the same organ. When the baby starts crawling around, picking all things around, eating and so on, and they have infection and drugs are used without prescription, it will affect this organ. So, so babies get born, and then they say that, the child is not talking. When they come to us, we say this child is not hearing. So we ask the mother, tell us if the child hears. So we will call John. While calling John, they will tap the boy. Of course, the boy will look in the direction. We don't argue much. We take them to the testing room to have the hearing evaluation done. And then there is zero hearing. Any child that must develop my language must hear. So hearing is important to communication, language development, and learning. Ma, those babies that come to the school, toddlers, preschool, and so on, must be tested for good hearing so that the good job you do will come out. Right, next slide. So this is showing us the brain. It's a slice of the brain where we have the uh, auditory brain. That is the area of our brain that deals with hearing. Next slide. How do we maintain balance? I have touched this earlier on, the eyes, the joints, and uh, the semicircular canal in the air. Next slide. Manifestation of air diseases. When do we say that there is a problem with our ears? When we cannot hear well enough. We, cat we categorize that as hearing loss. So if I want to address someone with hearing loss, I will have to raise my voice. But there is the other category, we call it deafness. There is no partial deafness. Deafness is deafness. So if somebody is mentioned to be deaf, he is deaf. There is no amount of sound that we elevate or amplify that that person will hear. The other point is dizziness. When you wake up in the morning, get out of bed, and then the whole room starts to turn. In fact, you will just hold on to your pillow and try to sleep back. It may even happen at, in the office 
you just discover that the office is turning or you are the one rolling within the office, then there is a problem in the air. The other one is tinnitus that is ringing in the air. When we often have this once a while, when it rings, we do like this and say, oh, somebody is talking about me. So nobody is talking about you. It's a sign of a problem in the air. However, we're entitled to some spontaneous events like that. Once a while, probably when we are hungry, probably when we are tired, but it should not be a day-to-day -day activity. That's ringing in the air. When it becomes persistent, then it is an indication of a problem. And the other one is itchy ears. All the time, ta 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 you look for barrow, you look for pencil to scratch the air. There is a problem in that air. Next slide. I have brought in this picture. Um, it's newborn hearing screening. That device is portable and uh, we take it around to check the hearing of newborn babies. A baby that is born today. We can conduct this test a few hours after delivery to prove that this child hears or does not. I'm happy to announce that we have it now in UCH. And my department administers this on every child that is born at UCH. It's the latest technology anywhere in the world, of course, advanced nations. No child gets discharged from the world without having this test done. So that they are picked very early and intervention can commence. So any child that fails the first test, we have a repeat after two days, then after two weeks, if the failure is sustained, then they get referred to the pediatric otorhinolaryngology department. That's the area of ENT for children for proper follow-up so that such a child can have hearing aid installed early in life so that they can be able to communicate interact with the environment, learn, and develop language. Next slide. Causes of ear diseases, what are those conditions that will cause ear diseases? Noise. Foreign bodies that are children put, even some adults, put foreign body in their ears. Trauma. We abuse ourselves at times. A child may be stubborn, is not following instruction, and then the next thing you do is to grab the air and twist it and roll it very well. You know, some children are not so lucky there will be collection of blood and the pinna, and that may destroy the shape of that air permanently. Then abuses at roadblock, a conductor has refused to do the usual, and then the policeman comes and lands a heavy slap, or a dirty slap. I don't know if there is any clean slap. But once the slap is heavy enough, it will cause a damage to the air. Then habitual scratching. We make it a habit to scratch our ears. Next slide. So noise can cause hearing loss from loudspeakers, industrial machines, grinding machines, headphones, and earpiece. I want to stress this again the headphone and earpiece, occupational noise and social leisure noise. Next slide. Now, we can see some of these images. The headphone, this small picture here is showing the headphone mounted on a boiled egg. And the noise from that headphone is so loud that the boiled egg shell crashed. It could get to that level. Quite a lot of our youth that we see around working with headphone, earpiece, if you are able to move close, you hear what they are hearing. If you measure the pressure level of that sound, it is so much that it can damage the hearing of such if it is worn for a long time. Social noise, we have firework there. December is around the corner, Christmas, firework. People think it's part of the celebration, but it has its side effects too, because of the sound that comes out of it. Next slide. 
So conditions that could produce hearing loss in the air include impacted wax, foreign bodies, otitis media. These are different conditions that could occur in the outer air. But the commonest I want to say is the air wax. Some people call it death in the air. But this is a natural oil to grease nature substance that the nature creates in our air for cleansing, for lubrication, so that any dirt that enters our hair, we get stuck to that oily substance. And it is supposed to be self-cleansing. It moves from within outwards on its own. You may not even know that it is dropping off. But we are so impatient. In fact, we have classified it as a dirty material. So after bathing in the morning and you sit at the dressing table, you pick cotton board and start to clean. You wipe out all those protective substances away. We expose our air canal to infection. Even the cotton board we are using is sold clean, not sterile. And from the day you open a fresh container and you pick out even only one piece, those ones around, the one that you remove, where your, the tip of your finger has touched, are already contaminated. So by the time you are using them next time, you are putting a contaminated cotton board into your ears. But it doesn't stop at that. Some people will pick a few sticks in their bag. And then the bag is not clean either. It gathers the dust in the bag. So when they are using it in the office, you know, they continue to contaminate it. Next slide. Um, next slide. Yes, the nerve, the, the other cause of uh, hearing loss or severe case that leads to deafness could occur from any of these conditions. We talk of autotoxicity when we use drugs that can damage the hearing nerve. A lot of people think there is a particular common antibiotics that people use whenever there is an infection. But the major side effect of that drug is hearing loss. You know? So that could occur from use of drug. Presbycusis is hearing loss due to aging. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God will spare our lives we will grow old. But there are things that come with aging. One of them is reduction of hearing. It's not only vision that gets diminished. It's not only joints that gets difficult to carry. Even the hearing is also affected. But thanks be to God, there are devices we can use to enhance the hearing of our aged or elderly citizen so that they can enjoy the jokes of their grand grandchildren. Right. Noise or trauma is another cause. A very loud sound, usually from banger, can damage hearing. Single noise like that. Such occur when there is a bomb explosion and then there is total loss of hearing. There is noise-induced hearing loss when we just expose ourselves at work. People are provided with protective devices, but they feel it's so discomforting to them. They don't wear it, and they expose their hearing to noise for too long, and that leads to deafness. Diabetes mellitus is um, it all sugar, that is sugar in the urine. Precisely, it is excessive glucose in the blood. This condition, too, can lead to hearing loss. And then we have people who are born deaf. Probably they have deaf parents, you know, in a way. So such may occur. Next slide. These are devices that we use to enhance hearing. We call them hearing aids. You probably must have seen one or two, but the commonest type is the one that is hung behind the air. They are quite effective. Unfortunately, our culture 
appears to be resistant to accepting this device. There was an old woman who came, the son, a manager of a big bank. The son was ready to buy the best of the yarn in it for the mother. As soon as the man left, the old woman said, in the local equity dialect, I don't know how to say it, but she mentioned that I should not uh, mind the son. Now, when she gets back to the village, her contemporaries will be making jest of her and say, ah, oh, rather rare, cannot hear out the DT. Meanwhile, they are not all hearing very well, you know? But this is a device that could have helped the old woman. Next slide. Force feeding. This is a modern day force feeding of babies. When you force them to swallow the pap or whatever food item you have prepared for them. The nose is blocked temporarily. The child tries to breathe in through the mouth and in the process swallows the food. But the food does not stay in the uh, pharynx, that is the throat, where it should go down. A little bit of it will spill up to the back of the nose. And there is a tube that leads from the back of the nose into the middle ear. So debris of the food enters into the middle ear. It will cause infection there. And then the air of the child will start to pour out pores. This also occurs when such a child is even bent down as they used to do in the olden days. And then some very busy mothers breastfeeding who wake up at night. Instead of sitting up to breastfeed, both the mother and the baby will lie down and the mother will apply the nipple. A bit of the breast milk will also enter in the wrong way, get into the air, and that child can start to have air discharge. Next slide. Next slide. Yes. This is showing the air wax that has been scooped up with a cutting board. Next slide. Now we can see the cutting board. We can see an unusual entry into the air drum. This individual was busy cleaning the air at a corner close to the door. Someone coming from behind who didn't know that the person was doing that struck the elbow. The cutting board went in. The next thing is pow. The air drum got perforated. The picture on the left side is showing that perforation. When such accident happens, the best thing is to see a physician. Unfortunately, a lot of people will go to the chemist shop or patent medicine shop. They will sell air drop. The air drop they will use will wash contaminants in the canal into the fresh wound and that will start infection. As a matter of fact, if nothing is done, that perforation will heal. So we tell them, keep your air dry. When you want to bath, if you're a lady, use a shower cap to capture the air so that water does not enter the canal. If it's a man, we ask them to use cotton wool, roll it into a small ball, coat it with Vaseline so that the cotton wool does not get wet. Then put it in the air, have your bath, and then remove. Once the air is kept dry, it will heal. Next slide. Trauma. This is showing picture of ruptured eardrum from slab. Next slide. Yes, we can see here a condition that, or those items that we use to attend to itchy ears. We can see biro cover, air pain, comb, to toothpick. People use it. Rolled piece of paper. You roll it and use it to scratch the canal. The final one there is feather. You'll be wondering what the chicken or cock is doing there. The innocent chicken is walking along, 
Then you tell them, help me catch the chicken. They rush after and pick it. Then you detach one or two feathers. After detaching them, what do we do? Uh, we don't apply it immediately. Yes, we trim. You trim it down, isn't it? And then you do what? You amputate the stem to the normal size you want. Am I communicating? Then after that, what do we do? I've not seen the answer. You see, when they have trimmed it and amputated the stem, they do like this. Yes. They will put saliva. Yes, they do it. In an attempt to clean the feather. And then you put it in there and start to roll it. They enjoy it a lot. You open one eye and close one. Eh? Now, the chicken that you have removed the feather was just in the dust a few minutes before then. You gather the dust in the soil. And then you have added your saliva that is not sterile either. Then you are enjoying the scratching with a lot of infection introduced. And the commonness of that infection is fungal infection. Fungal infection will not give you pain, but it will give you itching. So what you are scratching will become more. You will, it will, the demand will be more and more and more. It could be difficult to treat because you need to apply the drop for a long time before you can eradicate fungal infection. So we should just allow the chicken to enjoy themselves. And uh, next slide, please. Um, for body in the air, this image I wish we could see very well is a cockroach making an entry into the canal. This will not happen during daytime. Most times when we are asleep at night and they come visiting and they enter, I'm sure if any one of us had had this experience, we know that it's not very pleasant because the cockroach will be struggling to get out. And the itching, the irritation will be so much. And when the leg of the cockroach touches the air drum, it will sound as if it's going to rain with loud thunder and so on. Right? The time is 1 a.m. You can't go to the hospital for removal. But the solution is in the house. It's in the kitchen or on the dressing table. Just apply oil. You can apply olive oil. Whether it's plain or anointed, it will work. Are you with me? Or liquid paraffin. Just drop a few drops of it, and then it will suffocate the insect. The insect will die. There will be peace in the air. You can continue your sleep. But in the morning, you go to the hospital for removal and further treatment. Next slide. This is over, the, if you can see closely, the air, the pinna, that is the outer air, has been perforated at several points, putting different metals, earrings, and so on. I think nature who created our air made a larger portion of it to have cartilage, kirikiri, and then below is a small, soft area that has no cartilage. And that is where we have grown up to know that people put earrings. But these days, you have about three perforations. One below for gold, one in the middle for silver, one at the top for bronze. The more perforations you put, the more risk of infection which could be from tetanus, hepatitis, even HIV. And at times when there is a wound from that perforation, it could lead to ugly scar. There are some people whose scar becomes so bulky that the purpose for which they have perforated the air is defeated. So you see them walk around always with the scarf over the air because it cannot be exposed any longer. So we should take precaution 
about this. Next slide. Ringing in the air, as I mentioned earlier on, is not somebody mentioning a name. It could be a signal to a yet to occur problem, right? So when we have it persistently, we should seek care. Next slide. Dizziness is another condition that affects the organ of balance, particularly in the air. And there are so many conditions that could lead to this. Usually, there may be a newborn formation in the neck, which is obstructing blood flow to the organ of balance. But one must attend a, uh, a consultation session for proper evaluation to really know the cause of the dizziness. So, next slide. Nose. Next. That is the image of the nose. Next slide. Um, apart from the two holes you can see in front, on our cheek and the forehead, the bones there have air spaces, space containing air, and they open into the nose. They add quality to our speech. Next slide. We use our nose to breathe. The nose it acts like an air conditioning system. You know, it warms the air, add moisture to it before it gets to the lungs. Next slide, and so on. Yes, next slide. Now, what are the features or the manifestations of nasal diseases? That is, when our nose has problem, what are the things we will see? We can have nose bleeding. You just wake up and discover some blood stains on your pillow and then you check your nose, and then you have the blood still staining your hand. Or excessive catar from the nose, just running watery or mucoid. The other sign of nose problem is inability to smell. Some people are born like that. They have never smelled at all in their life. But some who used to smell before have lost the power to smell. Or it has reduced drastically. These are problems of the nose. Then when our nose gets blocked, you find it difficult to breathe through the nose. You stylishly open your mouth to breathe. There's a problem. Um, Epistas, yes, thank you. The last one there is boil, boils, which we call AWO. But the tiny boils we have on the face, we refer to them as pimples. They appear in a special area of the face that has been classified as dangerous area of the face. We'll get to know that. Next slide. So bleeding from the nose could occur when the, there is dry weather. During Hamatan, some people have it. It could be due to trauma, particularly in children who rub their nose excessively, or infection. At times, children put foreign body in their nose, and that can trigger off bleeding. Cancer conditions can grow within the nose, and the sign it will give is intermittent bleeding. So this uh, important points to note. These conditions are within the nose. Then we have other conditions in other parts of the body that can lead to nose bleeding. Hypertension, diabetes, systemic infection. When there is infection all over the body, it can lead to bleeding. Then there are some drugs that we use which can also uh, cause nose bleeding, and pregnancy. Even though pregnancy is supposed to be a normal condition, there are some people who will have some nose bleed intermittently during the period of pregnancy, and as soon as they deliver the baby, this will stop. Next slide, please. So pictures of people bleeding from the nose. Next slide. Yes, when we encounter bleeding, maybe in a social gathering, or even within the school premises. All we need to do is to calm down the child and then pinch the nose with the thumb and the index finger. 
and ask the child to bend the head a little forward. While you have pinched the nose, get a small container and instruct the individual. Anything that comes to your throat, spit it into this bowl. Because they may want to swallow it. And they might be swallowing their blood. So you want to quantify the volume of blood loss when they spit into the bowl, right? If ice blocks are available, you can put a few uh, pieces wrap in an handkerchief or a cellophane paper and put over the nose. This will help to shrink the blood vessels and then the bleeding can stop. But I need to mention that if the bleeding persists, then we should seek medical care fast. Next slide. Um, nose and sinus infections, catar, we have this once in a while. Most times it starts with viral infection. The nose will just be pouring watery fluid, right? Then some of this watery fluid gets into the throat too. So you feel irritated, you cough frequently. Then after about three to five days, it can become very thick. Then it's no longer viral. There is an additional bacterial infection that makes it yellowish and thick. This will require use of medications, antibiotics, as the case may be. But there is what you can do in the house, which is cheap and very effective. We call it steam inhalation. You boil water. When the water is boiled, it must boil. Then you put it in a small bowl and get small quantity of rub or mentholatum and put it, not aboniki. Aboniki contains other ingredients that could be injurious. So we don't recommend that. Rub mentholatum. In some places, they sell mentol crystals. It looks like tiny, tiny, glassy crystals like that, you know? You just put very little, not, that is not the medication, no. It's just to give um, some aroma to the steam so that you don't have a feeling that you are boiling your nose. Then you cover yourself and inhale the steam through the nose, through the mouth. Three minutes, five minutes is enough. Morning and evening. The kata will clear off so easily. You know, but a lot of people don't use this. They think it's too cheap, cheap treatment until you give them very expensive antibiotics, which may not even be necessary in most situations. So start with steam inhalation, you know, and being very careful not to have the water to spill over. Right. Next slide. Yes, this is the dangerous area of the face, which I tried to mention. If you draw a line from the bridge of the nose, down to the lip, upper lip, on one side, and you do the same on the other side, and you draw a line to separate the upper lip and the lower lip. That is the triangle. Pimples that occur in this area should not be tampered with. Because when people have pimples, you see them listening to lecture, they are pressing, their finger is never off the face. But when you press any of the pimples in this, triangular area. If they don't escape out, if the content goes deep in, then infection will enter into the blood vessel. And the blood vessel from that triangular area goes to the brain and the eye. So it can lead to blindness. It can lead to collection of pores in the brain. So we want to emphasize again that we should allow the pimples to remain, particularly if they are in the triangular area. Next slide. So foreign bodies in the nose, this is common in children. We have a few picked out from them, pictured on that side. Next slide. Throat. Next. Yes, the throat extends from the back of the nose down to where we have our voice box. Next slide. If you can see this picture very well, we see the mouth opened, and right at the center at the roof is something that looks like a small tail. We call it uvula. That is what they remove at Sabo. 
Incidentally, that structure is very innocent. It doesn't give problem at all. What creates problem for the truth most times are the structures on the sides. We call them tonsils. They are on the side of the uvula, of the belubelu. So when they get big, they create discomfort. We wake up in the morning and say, ah, I have sore throat. You know? You can't swallow saliva, you feel the discomfort, and so on and so forth. And as the day goes by, the pain gets less, then you're able to use some drugs, it can go off. In children, they have it with fever all over the body, and so on. But when this condition persists, and an individual has it up to about three or four times in a year, we advise the removal of the tonsils. Next slide. Um, this is showing a ring of lymph nodes. They are soldiers of the throat. There are so many of them right round that protect our throat from infection. Next slide. What are the manifestations of throat disease? When do you know that there is a problem in the throat? When there is sore throat? Discomfort, painful swallowing, hoarseness, when the voice goes Horse. A car, a car, yeah, very well. You see? That's hoarseness. Then this failure, with the nice, well prepared chicken, you try to swallow it, it's not going. That's difficulty with swallowing. Or when you try to swallow, it is with a lot of pain. That's the other point that shows there's a problem in the throat is snoring. Snoring is not a normal condition, but we get to it soon. Then halitosis, bad breath, is a problem in the throat. When somebody talks to you, then you turn the air, you know, stylishly. Next slide. Um, adenoids, tonsillitis, foreign body in the throat, laryngeal tumor, that's cancers in the throat, and... Uh, Acid bonds in the throat are some of the diseases that can affect the throat. Next slide. Adenoid is a common condition in children. They have this common saying about such children that dry season, wet season, their note is never dry. They always have it. If you observe them very well, their mouth is always open because the nose is blocked. So they breathe with the mouth. And their parents will be beating them. One day, close your mouth. The child will comply. Within the next minute, the mouth is open. Because that's the only route through which they breathe. And when they sleep, they snore. They snore a lot. They wake up in the morning tired. That is the bad aspect of adenoid. But the top of the snoring is changing there. When somebody snores and changes gear, then there's a problem. And what do I mean by changing gear? You know, the snoring is going nicely, then all of a sudden there's a momentary stoppage of breathing, and then the noise comes high, and then they continue to do the normal one. The period that they change the gear, that is stopping of breathing, no air enters the body and no air leaves the body. So the oxygen that the body needs is not entering. And the carbon dioxide that should be thrown out is contained in the system. The most sensible, sensitive organs to such are the brain and the heart muscles. And you can imagine in a child, every night, 365 days. Once we see them, we advise their parents, let us go and remove the obstruction, and then they get better. Next slide. Tonsillitis, this is sore throat and so on. Next slide. Yes, halitosis, bad breath. For some of us who can see the picture there, you could see the reaction. Somebody opens his mouth, the other person picks race because of the bad odor from the mouth. 
and this could occur from different situations. Next slide. When there is dental caries, the teeth is getting destroyed by infection, or maybe the person takes habit in eating all sorts without cleaning up the mouth. People who eat locust beans, iru, garlic, you know, such items can make the mouth to have this permanent odor. And then infections in the nose and sinuses can also give rise to such bad breath. But there are some systemic conditions that is maybe somebody has liver disease or a disease in the stomach, right? The breath, you know, when they even belch, the odor that comes out is so bad that people will start to look around who has messed, you know, that kind of a thing. It is a, a sign of serious condition. But how can we take care of these? Regular mouth rinsing, we wash our mouth after meal, or try to brush our teeth twice a day. You can use mouthwash or mouth spray. We should avoid dehydration, so we should take water as often as possible. And if there is any systemic treat disease, we should treat. Next slide. Voice production. I have been talking to Ross because my voice box has been busy vibrating the vocal cord together. And we can see the images of the vocal cord when sound is being produced, top one and the middle. When there is quiet breathing, then there is a space. The air flows through it. But when we are talking, it vibrates like this. The quality of sound that you hear is dependent on how sharp the edges of the vocal cords are. So if anything hangs between the two vocal cords, the voice quality will change. Next slide. Um, these images are showing various disease conditions hanging between the vocal cords. Commonest is singer's nodules. This is a condition that is found most times when people use their voice for occupational reasons. Soldiers who take command, bus conductor, teachers, singers, you know, the tiny nodules come and then disturbs the quality of voice. But at times we abuse our voices. Someone did celebrate her birthday. The whole people came around the boss and said, ah, my boss, you have not served them. See my friends, go and give them drink. You know, that's the celebrant, talking, 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 talking. So the following morning when she woke up, the neighbors went to greet her. Ah, only no one, no. I could not go, I said, go on you. I said, I well. You know, because she has overused her voice. We do have such, too. Probably when we go to occasions, you know, maybe to celebrate, to do a lot of things. The treatment for that is to rest the voice. Just make sure you don't talk for the next 48 hours or 24 hours even, if possible, you know? But what I do when people come like that, and I've taken history, why the hoarseness came about, I would say, go and rest your voice. Where do you work, secretariat? I will give one day sick off. On top of the one day sick off, I will now give sleeping tablet. I will say, after breakfast, take this one. After lunch, take this one. I won't give sleeping tablet at night. So when the person will have stayed off duty, will take the first dose and go to sleep. Of course, when you are sleeping, you are not talking to anybody. Even when you are dreaming, giving lectures, people around won't hear you because it's too really physical. So in the afternoon, he takes the lunch and uses the next dose. Now, in the evening after meal, there is no drug to use. He now stays awake. But other people in the house are sleeping. So there is nobody to talk to. So by that, I try to enforce voice rest. And they get over it. But please, my takeaway message for us on this hoarseness is if we know anyone who has hoarseness that has persisted for more than two weeks, 
then it is not party hoarseness. Oh. It is an indication of a serious disease. And the earlier, the better. Because once we pick the cause of the hoarseness, the treatment outcome is always satisfactory. So hoarseness of more than two weeks, please advise them to see the specialists. Thank you. Next slide. Foreign body in the throat. Next slide. Of course, we are all guilty of this. Once a while in the office, we put office pin in the mouth. Toothpick. In fact, it's habitual with some people. After breakfast, they use a toothpick. It will be there till lunch time. So they take lunch and pick another toothpick, which they will carry around till dinner time. And this foreign body, the toothpick, can get dislodged anytime and become a foreign body in the throat. Then, yes, this is a sign of choking. Eating and talking is not advisable at all. It can block our airway and then there'll be a problem. Next slide. Oh, this is showing a picture, a next ray of children who had swallowed coin. Thank God our currency is not uh, really appreciating the use of coins these days. But those days, most children, after playing with the coin, they put it in the mouth, and then it gets stuck. Next slide. I'm showing here a foreign body in the airway, which a child accidentally inhaled. But the only saving grace for the child was that the foreign body is not, uh, it has irregular surfaces. So a part of it hanging allowed air to flow to the lungs. And that was what kept the child to get to the hospital. Next slide. So we had to put a rubber tube in the throat. When the child came and we have taken the x-ray to confirm the level of the foreign body, we then made a hole in the neck, put a tube there to sustain the breathing of the child, and then we went up to remove the foreign body. Next slide. Um, this is showing images and history of burnt truths. When somebody swallowed an acid or alkali, even people who intend to take their own lives, they don't tolerate this. But there is a habit of those who make soap they will put the soda in container that should contain normal water for drinking, ever water, bottled water. So some children will accompany their friends home after school, see a bottle containing um, clear water in a bottle. They think it's water to drink, and then picked it and drank. And that led to the bones in the airway, even in the lips there. You know, so for domestic reasons, we should try as much as possible to keep such items away, particularly from kitchen or areas where eating takes place. Next slide. Fish bone. We all enjoy fish once a while. But when the fish bone decides to disturb a delicious meal, it will give a discomfort. Then you try adjust the neck, you drink water, it's not going. So we now call, please, help me put on a bowl of water on the gas, and then you prepare hard ever. I think the principle behind the hard ever is to hammer the bone off. Yes, you push it down. But I tell you, it depends on the location of the bone. At times, the eba gets there and hits the bone to go deeper. Now, when the pain is becoming more, it's not getting less. Then it's a sign that the bone is still there. In some situation, you may succeed. And then you discover that the pain is less. Then you call for the remaining food to finish it, you know. But once such event takes place and the pain is getting more, then you need to consult 
and uh, we know what to do so that it doesn't lead to a greater um, systemic disease. Thank you very much. Don't go, sir. Um, we want to thank you, sir, for this incisive, in, in, inciting um, lecture. We want to take questions now. Are there questions? Questions for our guest speaker this morning? Okay, question, Ms. Ogunira uh, Brocola, who else? Okay, Dr. Mrs. Um, Ajibola. Okay, Dari. All right. Ms. Ogunura, quickly. You can sit down, sir. What you've been saying, I am very, very hundred percent guilty of majority when it comes to the hair. Now, and I say, what can we do to each in here? Because I see cleaning my hair every morning. If I have a big bulk of a cutting board on my dresser, I see it as part of cleanliness. So every morning, even if I'm in a hurry, I can't wait. I put it in the a space in the car. So as I'm driving, I'll be enjoying the cutting board inside. I say, okay, this one is not dirty. This one is a bit dirty. I'm a used to, I'm a used for. So what do we do when we have each in here? Number two under that is that, how often do we clean our hair? Or we should wait, that red thing is discomfort. Is, uh, I'll be doing, sir, look at me. I'll be doing like this, that I need to get cutting board though, it's teaching me, no. So how often do we clean that? That's on the hair. Now, concerning the, the truth, that has to do with diseases, maybe they did not do the operation early enough to clear whatever is called causing the, the snoring. I do say people around me snore, but I discovered that they say if I sleep deep, I myself, I snore. And I say, okay, how do we know? Because I argue. Let's start recording ourselves. So we know who is snoring. <laughs> Just to know, because I want to know. They say I too, I, too, I do snore. And they will tell me some things that happened that I didn't, I wasn't aware, just to be, to be, to, for me to believe that I do snore. Uh, what do we do to the snoring? How do we stop the snoring habit, sir? Thank you. All right. Um, Brocola, very quickly, your question. Okay. Okay. To the pay, you are my work born or Latin you. Big but Jack Pedotti come one day. Mofabri, kidney, intention, lace, ton of man, junior. Thority and by one year would join your tobacco pork. I teach him by me, Tama, Ryan, your Thomas Abbas, your man, be on, big but Jack won't hack a level of Jumajini, Yako, he catch in a way. Be run Timo, a ritmo jelly coin. Tori Batio, my toji, Omi, a fair tomb, your tatimo, two silver affair, tomb for the poji. Ti a ba ni omo to le sun fun odidi bi omo to je pe to ba sun je po soroji so ni se pelu nkan meta ta daro kan sin mo nkan ti mo fe be ni all right dr mr ajibola very quickly Oh, do me just saying. Did I animal 
stop with ministry, Betty, Betty. Very by now, one fee or what? One call, so I think one buy on it. I'm not going to buy on it. So, I'm not watching for you. Hello, thank you, sir. Ah, you feel it? I feel it. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down. See, 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 I'm going to go down. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, my, I, okay, Rodari, very quickly. Yeah, thank you very much, sir, doctor. Um, you bear it in the UK, in the other key, you might be in Kongbi Bono, to man, Junior Lonofo, BT Bono, that be rise to Asia, Gina Lorino, that be a Kong Bono. In construction, we know that we take a bam jail or take a bam move. Your mama feel the lot of fun. Show that can't imagine me go back. I be older can't imagine me go to two two. Be cook two two. Be ice water. Be to 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 shit man let to swim one that that. See older can't you too much? So you ain't got no liberty more. Be very patient. Go nice. Be low enough. We want to ban jail. We come here to Praise the Lord. Just one last question that I want to ask. Um, what is the effect of long stay under the shower on the hair or swimming generally? Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for your questions. Uh, first, it's about itchy air. Um, what do we do? Yes, once in a while, we have itchy ears. But we should avoid as much as possible not to put anything inside. If we look at our air, there is a triangular structure there. That structure covers the canal, the hole that enters the air. With one finger like this, you can press to close and release, close and release, close and release, and keep doing that until you have a relief of the itching. When that relief comes, it may not last long. It will come back. Repeat that exercise and keep repeating it. The air will learn that you cannot go in with anything and then the itching will stop. Now, with the, then there is this common thing that if you must scratch your canal, then you can put your elbow. Where is the elbow? Yes, put it in your air. Uh -huh. It cannot enter, uh -huh. so don't put anything in here. <laughs> yes, how often do we clean our ears? We don't need to. If we need to clean our ears at all, it is the outer part, this portion, that we need to clean. Leave the canal alone. The oil that forms the wax starts very thin, like brake fluid, very thin, or maybe like uh, granite oil that you are warming. Then after a while, it becomes thickened like engine oil. And then by the time it's getting to the outer opening, it becomes like grease. After that, it goes into tiny, tiny particles and it drops off without us knowing. So if you leave your air to do that, which is the natural process, then you don't need to clean. The cleaning process is within, and it's in one direction. But when we attempt to use any device to clean, 
we will disrupt that flow. And that is what, in some situation, we create accumulation of wax. Because once we wipe out from one area, then the one that is coming, flowing gently out, we get to that spot, and then we hang. Now, I want to ask, when you are cleaning and enjoying it, there's a certain point you get to that you are not told to remove your hand, that painful area of the air. So if your wax is there, who will clean it for you? So you don't need to touch it. Nature that has created it has made it perfect. And that is the preaching we are making. So we should try as much as possible not to make it a habit. Once you get used to it, you find it difficult to stop. With regards to snoring, um, fat accumulation occurs in all parts of the body, including the throat. And anywhere there is narrowing, and flow of air or fluid is taking place, that narrowing creates turbulence. I generate a sound. be snoring. But we have discovered that quite a lot of people are well endowed. You know what I mean? They are fat. They are robust. That narrowness is there. So when they fall asleep, then it becomes noisy breathing, which is generated as snoring. It's only in some few situations that there is a growth in the airway that will lead to snoring. But you see, snoring is noise. It disturbs the other people in the room who are light sleepers or not sleeping at all. But as I said earlier on, when there is change of gear with snoring, that is the one that requires urgent care. So you can record the noise, but when the noise has changing of, of sound, yes, <laughs> you know, then you need to consult. T.A.T. Banyuwa, Tabiton of Banyuwa, they get me very brother color. By me, Kinsha no funny con, Ninu Yamawa, Uma wa letting by me. I want your magic low to a man rewe. Nibuba, Tabashi Wadi, in Cotan, in Bunquin, I let G, Ni, in Contiara, Taraco. Tell me yet if I see more lie more. Not about fasting, but about Debe and Lonofu. I bear a sick fa nyu, and Yama, you know, Julia, you know, I'm a fiaho for no fun. I'm a fa, I'm a fa. Never man got to look coco cocoa, Lati, you know. What about to buy John of a titty? If by me only jetty at him, I don't know fully demeter, but one day Jack or Moraoni. So, woman, be. Ti ba ba de ti sele te ni e ba je nikan to ni fura dada o le mo bi to ma nlo ti kini e ma npo o le jojo to ba lo si bi se ton ba ni ko lo ko an file kan wa lati store to ba de lati store ni kon 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 ya ma po o le se se boya dust inu store to ti fa simu on lo fa eh ko hun ma ha to ba ha Nigba mi o se se pe akolo ohun wa daada ni ka ma soroju ka ma pariwo papa won oluko mo wewe won se ni kawon ile idake la won yan tun ti gbe arewo won tun se so fa ile awon yan so ni lo yan ni gbogbo gba gbogbo gba gbogbo gba o ma je ki awo fele fele ta fi soro yan ko da bi gba ton na yan a wu bi gba ton na yan legba lati e lewo towo e wa wu be a one yen she marini ye. So rotenin yen so sita ko ni jadi da da. So ruwe non o man she le. Mbanti yon bandi ruwe mbo bo ba. A ma gwen yon ju. La ti lo wwen. Ni wwen tu wwen si. Ruwe ni bet o ba de dele. Ko lo simi o wwen yen ni o. Kwen te kwen kwa o ba dele lo tu ma bere. Another command. You know. And steam inhalation no man help. Ni ru. I won't come back and can't feel me. It will call me people not see me. Oh, man, she dada dada. On jeto bono, eh, on jeto bono dafara, 
Sugbon kin se to gbonoju. O lati gbono ni won ti won si. O mi mi mu na. Ti o ba ti en se omi to gbono gidi ko jo mi ti ya gbesinu fridge. O dara pupo ju omi nu fridge lo. Taba wo ikun wa, ta ba ni anfani lati mo binu wa se ri bele da se da wa inu wa o won apere ni pe te ba gbe owo yin si waju imu te fe emi yin si so gbono ni abo tutu o gbono o won gbogbo anfani a mo mi tutu a se gbogbo ojolo fun yin lo to ba denu lohun wa la lo ndale because if it's not it's supposed to be warm now you are forcing the temperature down So, eh, Coca Cola, to go not to two. To to one. To one. To one. To one. To one. Um, excessive staying under shower or swimming on the air. Yes. Well, swimming in clean water, and in fact. Clean, clean water is relative. Because if you go to a swimming pool to swim, the water there is treated with some chemicals. And the chemicals will cause irritation to the external air canal, the outer air. So those who love swimming have air plug that they use to plug the air before they go swimming. If you swim in dirty water, the natural water, the same applies. Because those waters that are natural are contaminated. So one can also expose the air to such infection. You know? And then we have some people who go under water to scoop sand. That is their work. You know, they go under water to get sand and so on. They dive down, come. For such people, their air is always exposed to moisture. And that will cause maceration of the skin. Skin yawa arog bede bede. To je pe kokoro le wo nu e easily bi gba ti eyan o wa alagba fo we know the washerman's hand how it looks when they are busy working the whole surface will be white and soft yes that's it gets to that even in the air if you stay in water almost always it will predispose the air canal to infection i think that is all the questions i have thank you very much